This hour is brought to you by Sweetland Waste and Removal Service, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Hello and welcome aboard Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Thanks a lot for joining us here on this Wednesday, October 23rd. We'll get you over the hump. Big day today. Our good friend Mitchell Page joins us, former Indiana football player. It's a Mitchell Palooza. We're going to have a Mitchell Palooza. It's been a minute, man. It's time for Mitchell Palooza. Indiana heading into uh, Nebraska. Bowl eligibility on the line. Matt Weaver from Peaks.com is also going to join us as well. Lots going on on the on the show today. Lots to talk about. The the World Series is underway. Man, that game went a little late last night, but uh, not too not too bad. I caught the last half of that game. Uh, the Nationals sneak game one in. Man, you better watch out. The Nationals are going to sneak up and win the World Series on everybody. They get the Astros five four in game one down in Houston. They hit by, by hitting a. Oh, man. What's the pitcher? I forget the pitch for Houston. They're top. He hadn't lost since May. Crazy. Unbelievable. In action last night, IU men's soccer. They are also uh, on the pitch against Evansville last night. I was out there for that match at uh, Jerry Agley Field. 5-1. 5-1, Indiana wins that one easily with no trouble. Um, last night, like I said, over Evansville. Five different guys scored in that game. Five different guys. A lot of youth. I think uh, one of the guys that came in and got to play toward the end a lot of the guys had not got to play much at all this season. So that's good for the Hoosiers. They, they've got a very young team. They're coming off of a 3-0 loss to Maryland, their first loss in Big Ten play. But uh, Indiana now ranked number 10. They're 9-2-3 and three on the season. They scored a season-high five goals in a dominating 5-1 victory over Evansville Aces last night. Evansville now two and ten and one. Redshirt junior Spencer Glass wasted little time in getting Indiana on the scoreboard as he slotted home a left-footed kick from just inside the 18-yard box in the bottom left corner, just a minute into play. I believe I heard it was the sixth fastest goal scored in IU soccer history. That's a lot of soccer history, folks. That's a lot of soccer history. Victor Bezerra and uh, Herman Endley were on the assist there. Joshua Penn assisted Bezerra on a go. A.J. Palazzolo scored uh, the third goal on an uh, assist from Simon Weaver. Thomas Ward got into the scoring act in the 68th minute. He's a junior. And then uh, redshirt freshman T- Trey Caps- Capsulus playing his first career game. His first career game. He registered the final goal in that contest in the 88th minute, finding space just inside the 18-yard box. Fired a goal towards the right corner. He finds pay dirt. But Glass's goal came 53 seconds into the match. 53 seconds. That's less than one minute. It's the eighth fastest goal to begin a match in program history. My bad. Indiana last scored a goal in the first minute of play against San Francisco back in 2017 when Trevor Schwartz found the back of the net in just 47 seconds. That's got to be demoralizing. I mean, just freaking demoralizing. You just start a soccer match, which is going to last 90 minutes of game time. That's of game time. So you're going to be running and playing for two hours, and the other team scores 
freaking seconds into the match. I mean, there's nothing that, that just aggravates you more. Unbelievable. Yeah, but uh, Indiana back at it. I think it's Friday against Ohio State, or is it next Friday? But their last home game, I think, coincides with an Indiana basketball game. The uh, the um, exhibition match. Tim texts into the show. Does Justin Smith finally have a breakout the year this year? <laughs> Man. Don't get me started. Let's hope. Because if he doesn't have a breakout year this year, Indiana's not going to have a breakout year. There's a reason that everybody is picking Indiana 10th, 11th spot. National people. They don't have any faith in Indiana. They don't have faith in Archie Miller. That, those are just facts. You don't have to like them, but they are what they are, and they're facts. Speaking of Indiana basketball, it's a gigantic weekend because – Dawson Garcia is on his visit this weekend. And everything that I've read and every uh, the people that I've talked to, this is coming down to Indiana and Marquette, ironically, who just played a, a close scrimmage the other day, in which Marquette won 72-69, only because Indiana missed 3,000 free throws. But um, Dawson Garcia, he's a five-star, 6'11", big dude in that 2020 class. It, it just, everything's pointing towards Marquette in Indiana. Now, there's a lot of things, a lot of cool things that I found out about uh, the Garcias. Dawson's mom's family knows IE football offensive coordinator Kalen DeBoer and the DeBoer family. They go back a long time, many years. His mom's family and the DeBoers are from the same hometown. His dad, Dave Garcia, played basketball with Kalen DeBoer at his high school, reunions and things like that. So that's kind of a uh, a nice little tie-in. His dad, Dave Garcia, played football. He was a quarterback, basketball, shooting guard at Black Hills State College in South Dakota and was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame there. His mom also played college basketball. Dave Garcia went to a very small high school in eastern Colorado. Less than 50 people in that school. I had classes three times the size of that at IU. Dave Garcia keeps tabs on how Kalen DeBoer and the IU football team are doing. Apparently, Dawson Garcia grew up shooting the basketball left-handed. And as far as basketball goes, he's a lefty. But everything else he does is right-handed. Some interesting tips. Well, this is the weekend uh, Indiana has to make their pitch. If I had to guess, I'd say it's 1A Marquette and 1B Indiana right now because of proximity. But... The, the visit can do a lot of good. He's, this kid's never been here, to my knowledge. So he hasn't seen everything he's going to see. He hasn't seen Assembly Hall. He hasn't seen what this crowd can be like, what this school is like, the campus. We'll see if that sells itself to him or not. But it's, that this is, make no mistake, this is a gigantic recruitment for Archie Miller. You know, I, I was on this bandwagon for a while, and I kind of stopped talking about it, but they have to land a big in this class, or they are potentially in some big trouble two years from now. They're going to have a bunch of freshmen in the front court if they don't get someone now. And Dawson Garcia is, is not just that. It's just someone that can help this team next season. Put him aligned alongside Trace Jackson Davis. And all these other guys, they're going to have some talent. But it's all uh, its all going to be happening within the next few weeks. We'll know. 
Dawson Garcia will be on his visit uh, in Bloomington this weekend. Tom Ostrom, of course, I, I believe has been the lead recruiter on this. His, he has the Minnesota contacts. Of course, this kid's from Minnesota, played on the same AAU program as Race Thompson. There are contacts for Indiana and, and Minnesota. We'll see how strong they are. I, I just, man, if I'm thinking, if I'm a kid, I'll be honest with you. I'm always honest. But if I'm a kid and it's coming out between Indiana and Marquette, come on, man. Is there really a discussion there? Um, I just don't see it. I mean, I, I would think that a kid is going to want to play in the Big Ten against the Michigan States and Jet and Tom Izzo and um, Michigan and, and 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 just all these great Big Ten battles. But every everybody's different. Everybody gets to do what they want to do. We'll certainly see how it turns out. Another text into the show. Can we get a commitment from Garcia on his way home from the visit? Well, you can. I, you're not going <laughs> to. Uh, they're going to go home and talk about it. There's there's a potential that there's one more visit to Marquette in the offing. Now, if that happens, all bets are off. If, if, if they get him back there after a visit to Indiana, I don't think Indiana has a chance. But if Indiana can be his last visit, I think they have an opportunity to land this kid. Well, obviously they have an opportunity. Is it 50-50? Is it 49-51? I, I don't know, but it's in that ballpark. I think it's a coin toss. I, I think maybe this kid, you know, it's a decision on whether or not he wants to go away from home, how far he wants to go away from home. But if you're two, what's the difference between two hours and Six hours. Yes, say it, four hours. I'm just saying, I mean, if you're not going to play in your hometown, what's the difference? So I'm not sure the proximity matters as much there. I I promise you, they're looking on which one is going to benefit him most as as an individual player. Which one is going to provide him the best path for his future. That's what he's looking at. It's exactly what he's looking at. That's what they're evaluating. Does Indiana provide that? Well, there's arguments that can go either way there. I'm not going to get into that argument because it's not not my decision, but that's what it's going to come down to. And uh, they've got it this weekend. Here's the opportunity to do it. Hey, we got a great show coming up today, man. My man, Mitch, Mitchell Page on the program today. Haven't talked to him for a bit. Our good buddy, former football player for Indiana. Going to join us. Talk about this big game this week, man. Indiana taking on Nebraska. Looking for bowl eligibility. Come on. Seriously? We're in October. What are you, nuts? They've only played, they've played seven games. You got to have six wins. They've only played seven. We're talking six wins for Indiana? What? Get out of here. Yes, we are. Can they do it? You talk about weird. The the, the spread on this game has just bounced back and forth. It started out with Indiana being a two-and-a-half point favorite. Then it jumped to Indiana being a three-point favorite. Then yesterday, it swung the other way with Nebraska jumping out to being a one-point favorite. Now, it's back the other way with Indiana being a a point-and-a-half favorite. I don't know that I – I can't remember the last time I've seen a a, a spread bounce back and forth across the line like that, you know – they usually don't move that much at all. They'll move a little bit. This thing has moved three or four times already. And we're still days ahead of this. Man, I got to get ready to leave for Nebraska. I keep forgetting. Gee whiz, that's in two days. Crikey. 
But, uh, yeah, how, how weird is that? The thing to jump from Indiana being a three-point favorite swings four points the other way to to Nebraska being a, a one-point home favorite. Now it swung back the other way, Indiana, a one-and-a-half-point road favorite. It's wild. Hey, we got a lot coming up on the program, man. We're going to talk about it all. Mitchell Page, a former Indiana football player, joining us here today. It's a Mitchell Palooza. Also, Matt Weaver from Peaks.com is going to join us. We got plenty more after that to talk about as well. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Beat Radio, back with more from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moye. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lord, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington County. Counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red eye U hat reminiscent of those worn during the world famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have very knowledgeable about community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with SC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765 623 9093. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier. Number 23, 1992, and I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million-dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed Radio here on this Wednesday, October 23rd. We're going to get you over the hump with my, my favorite, my man Mitch, Mitchell Page. It's a Mitchell Palooza. How are you, Mitch? What's up, Jim? Good to be back. I haven't been on too long. I apologize for that, but always happy to be here. Hey, man, always grateful to have you on. And what a, what a year it's been for Indiana football, we'll get to that. But the, how are things going for for Mitchell? How's work? You you keeping everybody alive and uh, having a good time? Yeah, we're trying to. Um, it's busy, but I'm really enjoying it and happy to be just calm, not worrying about getting hit all the time. So that's good. 
Yeah, I was going to say, what's it like not be, having a fall and, and not having to go through training camp, not having to worry about all the things that come along with the, being on a football team? Yeah, like I said, less painful. But I think if you ask any former player, you just miss the camaraderie and building for something and having a set goal that you're trying to achieve. It's just a little bit different. So finding new ways to give myself some goals and things I'm trying to work toward has been a bit of a challenge, but I'm getting better every day. Mitch, when was your last year at IU? Was it 2015? 2016. 17. Winter of 2017. So the Boston Farms Bowl. 17. Man, things are time's getting away too fast. I didn't think it was that long ago. Crazy. Third season. Without. Crazy. Well, they haven't played in a bowl game since you left, but this is the season, man. It looks like they're heading in that direction, Mitchell. A great season so far for Tom Allen and uh, the Indiana football team. They're 5-2 and two right now. The, they got a shot at Nebraska this weekend. Uh, on the road, it's tough, a tough environment. 90,000 people, of course. And they might be without Michael Penix. But even with all that, as crazy as it's going to sound, I still think they have a shot to win the game in Nebraska. I think they have more than a shot. I just looked at it this morning. They're favored by a point and a half. I think it's a game they should win. I've watched Nebraska a couple times, and they're okay. But I don't think they're great on offense. And defense, there's a lot of holes. IU's done a great job getting up and down the field this season, and they're really good on defense. They have made some plays to win the game on defense, which has been really big and something I think a lot of IU fans weren't necessarily used to. So it was a good change, welcome change. But – I think they got a shot. I'm hesitant to say the number that I think, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think they get to nine. I think they beat Michigan, too. Well, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I definitely do, especially if they get Michael Penix back. Um, I, I, I've kind of had him. I didn't have him marked for nine wins, I'll be honest with you, but I had him marked to win eight this year. And um, after that oh, uh, after that Ohio State game, <laughs> a lot of us were worried about that. But then we didn't. Worried. Well, we would real we would come to see that Ohio State does that to everybody uh, that they play. So that Ohio State loss not looking so bad, especially uh, when they went up to East Lansing and performed like they did. Uh, but this is a team this week that's probably going to be led by Pey- uh, Peyton Ramsey. We don't know that, but man, talk about this new uh, offense with Kalen DeBoer in there. He's really shook things up. Yeah, it's very refreshing. Um, they come out firing as opposed to the little dink and dunk. Even with Peyton, they're spreading the ball around. And I think just my philosophy on offense, get the ball in the perimeter and give ball to the guys that are fast and get away from all the huge people. Make sure you run it, but let's spit it around a little bit. Let's expand the field. And they just didn't do that the last two years. This year has been even Peyton, who people say has a worse arm, whatever it is, he came out ready to fire it a little bit. And I was happy to see that. Yeah, and, and this team is, is having some success. They're going, and like I said, they went on the road to East Lansing, didn't flinch. Now they go into a place, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, very iconic, of course, one of the most iconic places in college football, of all of, the, all of college football. Uh, Mitchell, you played in some great places, some historic, you know, on the road at Michigan, on the road at Ohio State, on the road at Penn State. The, these are all unbelievable tough places to play nebraska also one of those indiana hasn't been there since 1977 of course nebraska joining the big 10 a few years back but uh, indiana has not gone there until now uh that's a place i don't think you ever got a, an opportunity to play what what's it like going into those unique venues like that it's a lot of make sure you get there early get out on the field early because it is it's an iconic place to say that the venue doesn't matter, the fans don't matter, you're kidding yourself. But getting yourself out on the field, in the environment early, so you can kind of ooh and ah, and this place is amazing. Imagine all the great players that have played here, the awesome things that have happened. Two hours before the game, walk around, hour and a half before the game, all right, now let's play. Field the exact same, let's play. But you have to, when you're a first time there, they haven't played there since, what, 1970s, you have to take some time and just appreciate how special places like that are because they don't – in the Big Ten, it seems like everybody's got one. 
but in the grand scheme of things, those places, they just don't exist that often. So you have to take some time to really take in how cool that atmosphere is going to be. Yeah, and it's going to be a, a, a one that's going to make it a tough atmosphere to play in as well, just just by nature of having 90,000 people. Uh, anytime you're in a situation where you've got 90,000 people, that's a tough situation to be in. But this team is – I was up at East Lansing, and I, I'll tell you, man, I was, I was surprised, pleasantly surprised on how well they handled that crowd. It was like – didn't matter to them. They didn't. Didn't. They didn't phase them one bit. They just kept coming, and they're going to need that because ninety thousand people. It's a lot of people, and it gets pretty loud, especially on offense, Mitchell. Yeah, there's going to be some silent counts, um, extra communication. I'm sure they've been practicing all week, different ways to signal in plays because it does. It gets loud, and especially in an environment when Nebraska isn't doing as well as. <laughs> The fans probably wish they were, so there's going to be some hostility in the, in the noise. So it'll get even louder. They're, they'll be prepared, but it was different in practice. We'd crank up the noise on the speakers and have to do sound accounts all week. And Mitchell, when you go to these kinds of places, how – how difficult is it though, when you're, you're especially with an offense like Indiana runs, where they they do a lot of checkdowns and a lot of uh, play changing, where you you change the play at the line of scrimmage. That makes a lot, a lot of that stuff more difficult. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, having a pace about you, so I mean, it's just think about it as a fan. It's hard to be loud for five straight minutes. If we can apply pressure to the defense, positive plays, positive plays. Don't give the crowd any reason to get into it by taking a sack or getting tackled behind the line. Check down for five yards. You do that every time, that's a touchdown. Consistent, positive plays will keep the crowd out of it early, and if we can be consistent, keep them out of it often. Mitchell's got a recipe for success, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, how special would it be, though, to see this Indiana team that, that they've, I don't want to say struggle the last couple of years because it's not been a struggle. It's just been, they just couldn't get over the hump, it seems like. Uh, this is a year they could possibly do more than just get over the hump. I mean, if, if they win this game at Nebraska, that makes them bowl eligible before we even get out of October with four games yet to play. Yeah, I think that, Bowl eligibility at this point is uh, given. If, if I'm on the team, I'm trying to play on January 1st at this point. That's what I've been thinking since watching them last week, handle some different looks from the Maryland quarterback going out, the way they handled some adversity, penalties, a ton of penalties. And to come back and still win the game on the road, I think I'm trying to win nine games. I don't know, ten games. I think that's reasonable, but I'm trying to win nine. I'm trying to play an SEC team, a top SEC team, and a big-time bowl. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I've set my sights on. And, of course, the, the more games you win, the better bowl you're going to end up in, uh, the better time of play. That January 1st bowls, those bowls come to those guys that win nine games. And uh, how incredible would it be to see Indiana go from not being in a bowl to being in, like, the little low-tier bowls to jump into a nine-win bowl? That would be unbelievable. I think it would be unbelievable in so many ways. And I was just talking about this the other day. The biggest way it would be unbelievable is recruiting. You start to get kids not necessarily from Alabama, that are picking us over Alabama, but we start to creep our way in. Even just one year, I think you get a couple kids the first year to say, hey, this team's going somewhere. I want to prove that I can be a part of something that's turning into something pretty cool. And you don't just get the kids that are, and I don't think anybody at IU is like this, but around the country, that just want to play, play early. You start yeah. to get into a new tier of recruit. Taiwan Mullen and then Michael Penix, those guys from Florida and uh, the guys yeah. from Detroit and all around. I mean, they're, they're starting, that would really start an out. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with what Tom Allen has done recruiting wise as it is, but I can't imagine. And, and that's been based on a couple of five and seven seasons. He's, he wins eight, nine games. And I, I don't know how, how big, how high the ceiling can go for Indiana. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things, Tom Allen's obviously done a great job. This is A recruiter is what he is. 
He's a phenomenal recruiter. That's what he's been his whole career. But one of the most important things, if they win eight or nine games, the kids that came in that are young, that trusted Coach Allen, are now going to tell their friends back home, they got a bunch of buddies back home that are really good players. Say, hey, this is a pretty cool place to play. The school is awesome. The people around the program are awesome, and we're winning. And I think the best recruiting you can do is your buddies. You're going to trust them first and foremost. So that this is going to be a huge end of the season, and the way they handle this, kind of in a position they've never really been in, I think will be a huge indication of where this program is going to go for the future. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. These guys like Taiwan Mullen, whose brother played for Clemson and plays for the Oakland Raiders now, whose cousin is Lamar Jackson. You know, they played with a lot of talent, but they also have a lot of friends, like you said, family members. They, they A lot of them have brothers that are coming up and playing. And the inroads that Tom Allen has made into the state of Florida alone are, are staggering. But like you said, he started hitting into states, football power states, like Alabama, like Ohio, uh, where they're getting – better players than they're getting now, which is hard to believe because they've had back-to-back recruiting classes that have topped anything Indiana's ever seen. Yep, and it's showing on the field. You build with recruiting, and better players need a better team, first and foremost. So they're doing a great job. Absolutely, and for the most part, I think that Tom Allen has a pretty good staff around him as well. Uh, I know there's a lot. Of, there's some youth on defense. Uh, and Kane Womack is a, is a very very young defensive coordinator, but there is there's they seem to be getting through the growing pains. Uh, but man, it's 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 a pretty good situation all the way around right now for Tom Allen. Certainly hard to argue. Uh, I was worried a little bit. When we saw Michigan State, IU goes up there and beats Michigan State in every facet of the game except the scoreboard. And we've seen that show before. So I was a little bit worried there, like, man, are we ever going to get there? Are we ever going to get there? And then on defense, Juwan Burgess makes a play like he does, rips the ball out. That's the start. Now the next, the finisher is the offense going in and scoring and putting the game away. But that's that's a play that wins games. That's a winning play. That's the kind of play that Michigan State made to beat us. Winning plays. And I think IU is more and more and more doing that every week. So they're definitely on a great trend. Absolutely. And then talk about what you've seen out of little that we have seen from him. Michael Penix, he's, he hasn't played. He's gotten to play that much because of injury this year. But when he's been in there, he's been spectacular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything to add. He is spectacular. He's arm is phenomenal and I think he's the least afraid to let it loose that I've seen I mean he just trusts his guys trusts his receivers he's obviously they've obviously worked incredibly hard in the off season, and they trust each other that's all I have to say <laughs> when he's in there I think we can beat anybody except maybe Ohio State they're pretty good <laughs> they are pretty good and, and, and we've got another game like that coming up here soon Penn State yep. uh it in at Happy Valley, which is not going to make it any easier. But um, there hasn't been a lot of fall off with Michael with, with, with Peyton Ramsey in there. Kalen DeBoer's offensive scheme has he's done a marvelous job of, of scheming to the quarterbacks and, and, and against these defenses. But it, like you said earlier, he gets the ball to a lot of different people, and in doing so, it keeps this offense one as it's just a rapid fire offense, very difficult for def, def, defenses to get in front of. Yeah, it doesn't change much. Um, I People always talk about Michael Penick's running ability. I think Peyton is a not a way better runner, but a better runner. And that adds that aspect to the offense to where now we're getting even less negative plays because he can create. He, a lot of times last week I was thinking, oh, boy, this is another sack, another sack. And he finds a way to get out and get 15 yards where there was nothing. So – I think Peyton just adds another dynamic to an offense that already has a lot of dynamics. There's not much fall off, in my opinion, to Peyton. I think Penix is obviously the starter. He's the guy when he's healthy. But there's not a huge drop off. And having that experience as a backup, I mean, that's invaluable. Absolutely, and Indiana is averaging now of over 300 yards of games with two quarterback, basically a two quarterback system, um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, 
a lot of times when you have a situation where you've got two different quarterbacks and they're going back and forth, not because of strategy, but because of injury. But even with that, there, there's a differences. I, I don't think that, that a team has to really plan dip very much differently for either quarterback in this scenario right now. I don't disagree. I think that I use kind of MO is completion. Let's get completions. Let's get positive plays. Both quarterbacks are ranked in the top of the country in completion percentage and quarterback efficiency. That's what IU is trying to do. They're trying to make sure that we get positive plays. Even if it's not a huge one every time, let's hit singles. Let's hit singles. Singles will win the World Series if you hit enough of them. So let's keep hitting singles, make completions, positive plays, and they've had a ton of success doing that. Yeah, I look at, you know, last year we talked about the uh, the uh, rousing success that um, Peyton Ramsey was having passing. Uh, then this year you, you get Michael Penix. He's throwing for 69% right now. Um, and Peyton Ramsey, 73%. That's two different quarterbacks averaging over 70% for the season on a team that throws the ball a lot. That's crazy. They both are averaging a quarterback rating in the 150s. This is nuts. Insane. Those are, I think those are some of the coolest stats that IU has had since I've been paying attention to the team, which is a long time. It's an incredible stat. speaks to how well the wide receivers and quarterback work with each other and understand each other and communicate. It's a really cool stat. And how is it as a receiver, man? You got to It's got to be fun knowing you're going to go out today and play for either one of those two quarterbacks because you know that ball is is coming to you at some point. Yeah, it's it's pitch and catch. <laughs> That's as simple as I can make it. It's pitch and catch. A lot of times when either quarterback is in, it's a great feeling. It gives you a ton of confidence. It makes you run a little bit faster. Get out of cuts faster. I, everything is good when the quarterback is on the money. And there's trust. You, and Mitchell, you played in an era uh, under Coach Wilson, and uh, the, the program was was trending upwards at the time. But it it hadn't got to I don't it hadn't gotten to where they are right now. Maybe uh, uh, possibly. But uh, what is it going to be like for this team if, if this year if it comes out ends up like we think that it's going to like it ends up that we, we think they're going to end up not only in a bowl but in a pretty good bowl. Uh, what does that mean to this program? It changes the standards, which is the foundation of a whole program. What's acceptable, what got us to eight wins, let's maintain that. Now, where we used to act like six wins, we changed a little something, and it didn't get us to six wins, it got us to eight wins. Don't tweak anything else except to make it better. We're only going to be better than the standard. It raises the standard for everyone on the team, from the lowest walk-on, to Wab Felier, Michael Penix, best players on the team. It changes the standard for the team. It changes what's acceptable to the coaches, and it's only going to make you better. Yeah, and talk about uh, they had the the coaches' salaries published again yesterday, and and once again, Coach Tom Allen, the lowest paid in the Big Ten. Not only is he the lowest paid in the Big Ten, he's paid less than Chris Ash from, from Rutgers, who's fired. Doesn't he have a job? and he's still making more money than Tom Allen. Uh, that's certainly going to change after this season, I think. Uh, I, I would be shocked if Indiana does not uh, rework a deal for him after this because, to me, it's not that he, he deserves more yet because up until now they haven't done anything. But once that happens, it becomes almost embarrassing for Indiana, I think, to have your football coach being the lowest paid in the conference and the 71st lowest paid in the country uh, when you're having success. Yeah, it certainly doesn't uh, doesn't show a ton of investment in the football program, especially someone that they brought in, and we can get into that a little later, but brought in and were looking at as someone they really wanted to be there for a long time. To hear that is a little surprising. To keep the momentum going, there has to be investment from the players and the coaches, first and foremost. And I think they've shown that they're doing that. They're improving. Now the university has to show an investment in the program as well. 
I agree, brother. I think the next time we're talk, we're going to be talking about a bowl eligible team, without doubt. I agree. I agree. I think if we talk Saturday night, we're going to have a bowl eligible team. That's what I think. Uh, I think you may be right. We'll certainly find out. Mitchell Page, my man, I cannot thank you enough, brother. We appreciate you. We love having you on as often as possible. Look forward to doing it again, especially uh, as the season starts to wind down. Yeah, definitely. And nothing else. I'll see you at Northwestern or at, in Bloomington for the Northwestern game. I'll- yeah, there we go. Exactly. A little alarm going off there. Uh, absolutely. Mitchell Page, buddy. Thank you so much, brother. Have a great rest of your day, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, that's going to wrap up this segment. we got a lot more coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat. Matt Weaver from Pigs.com is going to join us next. We'll be back with all that and more right here on Indiana Sports Beat from the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. For the best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moye. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. TheDailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington County. For excellent service and peace of mind, call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red eye U hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. This is James Blackman Jr., former Indiana Hoosier. Make sure you're keeping up with the Hoosiers on Indiana Sports Beat. Today's guest is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville with hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer. Pizza, burgers, beer. Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, of course. Coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios here on this Wednesday, October 23rd. You know what that means. It's the Dream Weaver. Matt Weaver from Pigs.com is joining us. Matthew, how are you, brother? I'm doing okay. How are you guys doing? 
Doing well, doing well. Uh, in the midst of a, uh, a huge week for Indiana, they're coming off of a big win on the road, not so much as the opponent uh, in Maryland, but the fact that it was a road win, a Big Ten game, uh, a game that got them to five ga- five wins, uh, one game short of bowl eligibility already with four five games left to play yet. Uh, but a game at Nebraska, which uh, it's weird, Matt. I've watched this point spread, and when it first came out, Indiana was they made Indiana a two and a half point favorite, which was a little surprising. Then it jumped to three points. Then it swung the other way. Nebraska was a one point favorite. Now this morning we wake up, and Indiana's back to being a point and a half favorite. So this game is obviously a, a toss up. It's going to be a tough environment for Indiana, but a winnable game for the Hoosiers. Yeah, it is, and I'm, I'm guessing, I mean, you know, I paid a, a ton of attention to the spreads and, and how that goes, but I'm guessing it's probably based on what they're hearing as far as, you know, who could play and who can't play or, you know, who's questionable as far as I'm both both starting quarterbacks, you know, Adrian Martinez for Nebraska and obviously Michael Penix for Indiana, are, their statuses are up in the air, and I think Nebraska is going to be down. Uh, maybe Wondell Robinson, which is, uh, if that's the case, that's a, that's a pretty significant blow for them, so – um, yeah, this is a this is a chance to uh, to get another road win, get a sixth win, and and uh, it's a team where it's a game where Indiana should be should be very competitive. They go in there and and play their game, um, you know, re- regardless. Obviously, you like to have Michael Penix, but I think even with Peyton Ramsey, they can run the ball. I think they still got a shot to go in there and get a W. Yeah, I agree uh, because Kalen DeBoer has really done wonders with this offense. Uh, he, he's loosened it up even more so than it, than it has been. And, and Monday when we talked to him, uh, he was asked if he had a, you know, a set playbook for, for Peyton Ramsey. And he said, no, he just, but he knows what he's comfortable with. He knows what he likes doing and where he has the most success. And he's able to tailor uh, the play calling around that without sacrificing much. I mean, obviously there's a difference between Michael Penix and Peyton Ramsey or the one wouldn't be the starter and the one, the backup, but there's not a ton of drop off because, of what Kalen DeBoer has done, and, and I think it's actually going to come down to Indiana's defense, Matt. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then you know, I also think, like I said, I think if if you know, with Michael Penix, you can put the game more on his shoulders than maybe so you can with Ramsey. I mean, Mike, Michael Penix has shown. I mean, they basically did that at Michigan State. They get the whole the, the offensive game plan was pretty much on Penix's left arm, and and he delivered. And um, you know, Saturday if it's Ramsey, I'm not sure you can do it, it can be that much on him. But you know, so that's why. To me, the running game and, and Nebraska's kind of struggled this year. Uh, they're giving up about 188 yards, I think, uh, per game. And then the Big Ten, it's over 200. So, you know, you, you would think this is a game where you can get the running game going. And it, they've, they've been a lot better the last couple of weeks. Um, and then, you know, have, if it is Ramsey, have him, you know, kind of make those throws that he's comfortable with and, and not have to uh, not have to carry the offense. And I think if that, they do that, then the defense can, uh, can play well and make some stops. And really, you can slow down their running game. Um, because that's what Nebraska wants to do with the uh, with their offense under Scott Frost. If you, if you can kind of slow that down, it's kind of like kind of like with Maryland. If you can slow down the running game, force them into uh, situations where they have to throw the ball where they're not really comfortable, then it really plays into your hands defensively. Yeah, I think Indiana's done an okay job against the straight up run. They've had problems with running quarterbacks, but if it's a straight up run, they've done a, a decent job. Uh, hopefully, they can continue. To improve on on that this week, as you pointed out, uh, I, I think that this is a, a rare opportunity for Indiana to go into a place like a Nebraska and come out with a win. That would make Indiana, first of all, bowl eligible. But there are so many things that they would do to this program. A win over a, a program like Nebraska on the road, that in of itself is is huge. It would be huge for Tom Allen, a huge for the program, and it would make them bowl eligible, like I said, with four games left to play, uh, a position many people did not see this Indiana team in. Yeah, you know, going into uh... – after the, you obviously expected to win the Rutgers game, and so to me, for these these the next three games with Maryland this past weekend, Nebraska obviously this week, and then Northwestern at home the following week, you know I thought two out of three. If you get two out of three, obviously you'd be six and three going into the next bye week um, with three to go. You're bowl eligible, and right now you know I use kind of playing with house money after winning at Maryland. I mean, you know if it, this is uh, obviously I, to me the pressure is on North. Or, I'm sorry on Nebraska this week. They're three and three. It's a home game. They've had two weeks off. It's really a game that they need to win. So I mean, you know, Indiana should go in there kind of loose, um, and obviously focus and and have the right mindset. But 
you know, to me, we winning at Maryland took a little bit of the pressure off, and, and hopefully they play that way. Hey, they come out and kind of play their game, kind of like they did at Michigan State. They, they played like they had no pressure. They went out and played football and, and played well and took a, took a pretty good Michigan State team down to the water. So I think if they can, if they can bring that same kind of uh, performance this weekend, I think they got a good shot to get a W. Yeah, I, I, Michigan State uh, to me was very impressive by this team because what we've seen a lot of immaturity out of this team this year uh, on both sides of the ball, but especially defense. We, we've seen them; they're young, they're they're inexperienced. But man, they they go up to East Lansing in front of seventy thousand people and they play like they're at home. It didn't matter a bit, which to me was very shocking. It, it was a pleasure seeing a Michael Penix run that offense like that. Peyton Ramsey, of course, he's got tons of experience. I don't think the atmosphere is going to bother him. He played at Ohio State last year, where he had a great game, so he's used to these type of environments as well. And I, this team seems to be thriving on these kind of situations, which is just weird because we talked about them being so immature or not too long ago. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think when you have a little bit of, I think when you have a little bit of success, that kind of, excuse me, that kind of breaks confidence. And even though they lost at Michigan state, there was a lot of positives. And even though the defensively, you know, they gave up some points. I, I overall, I didn't think they played terrible at Michigan state. I just, you know, there was, it was a handful of plays. Now, unfortunately those plays still count. I mean, obviously they do, but it wasn't like, you know, they, they got pushed around the entire game. They made a lot of plays defensively. They just had a couple breakdowns. And, um, you know, obviously they, they've, they've cleaned those up the last few weeks. They had a few they had a few at Maryland. But that second half defensively at Maryland, you know, was, you know I think what's really impressive is for years I've seen Indiana coaching staffs not be able to make adjustments at halftime. And this staff made great adjustments on both sides of the ball. They ran the ball well in the second half after not maybe running as well in the first. And then defensively, seven points and like 100 and I think it was like 140-something yards. And basically, seventy half of those yards came on two plays. Um, they did a great job, and, and I think this defense is growing. I think it's going to be a pretty good defense. They're still probably going to make some young mistakes because, especially in the secondary, you got a lot of young guys. But there's also a lot of talent, and, and um, you know, hopefully this week they can come through. Absolutely, uh, they have grown and grown. Uh, hopefully, they will continue to do. Uh, as we look forward to this game. Uh, Matt, what what are the keys to Indiana defensively to get a win at Nebraska? Well, you gotta you gotta limit the big plays, and you know that's a, that's Scott Frost and his time as a coach, and obviously even as an assistant at Oregon, you know that it's a big play type of, type of scheme. Um, you know, and I was kind of you know I hate to just look at stats, but one thing you kind of look at is big plays. Last year in Nebraska, actually pretty impressive. They didn't go to a bowl game; they were second. Second most, our second most uh, big plays in the Big Ten. Ten plays are plays of ten yards or more behind only Ohio State, and the next six teams after them all went to bowl games. So in the t- first eight teams, they're the only one that only played twelve games. Their their um, explosive plays are, are pretty are pretty far down this year. They're not they're not getting nearly as many. So to me, that's the key. You got to try to make them grind it out. I mean, we saw what happened when they. I watched the game against Northwestern. Northwestern did not give up big plays. And they and Nebraska really struggled to win that game and score points. It was 13-10. And if Northwestern could have done anything offensively, they win that game. So, to me, that's the key defensively. Stop that run. Don't give up those big plays. And then offensively, take care of the ball. You know, run it. Stay ahead of the chains. Especially if Peyton Ramsey's your quarterback. You don't want to be in second nine, third and seven. You want to be in, you know, second five, third and two. So, where you have more of the playbook to work with, uh, you can do throws that he's more comfortable with. I think if you do that, then obviously special teams don't make any mistakes. Don't give them garbage points or free points. You know, just you know, at least play them neutral in special teams. And I think if you do those things, you, you, you can go in there and you can get, you can get your sixth win of the season. Yeah, uh, Indiana has done a great job as far as having multiple drives this season with with nine, ten plays in it, eating up clock, scoring. They've done a good job in the red zone. One area that they really got to get cleared up to uh, off of last week is penalties. Man, double digit and penalties. They've got to get rid of that. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I'm not saying that they weren't penalties or they were. I mean, I you know, I wasn't at the game. So I can only go by, uh, you know, it's hard to see when you're when they, on TV. They only show, you know, obviously they don't show everything. But, you know, I mean, I thought the, the one pass interference penalty on the on the first drive, the second one was was a, kind of an iffy call. It looked like the receiver ran into the DB as much as the DB ran into the receiver. Uh, you know, so, you know, but that's how it goes. I thought there were some holding calls on Maryland that could have been called where I, you got penetration up the middle. Um, and, and I thought, that, but, you know, that's just the way it is. But, yeah, that's something I'm sure they'll focus on. Um, you know, it's a good teaching moment for these guys, uh, for the coaches, with the players. 
and to show them, hey, this is what you can't do. This is what you can't do. You know, you got to get this cleaned up because you, you can't. It's hard to win if you commit. I think they committed what eleven penalties. That's really hard. To, that's really hard to win um, week in and week out if you're making that many mistakes. Yeah, even if they're small penalties, it doesn't matter. Those are drive killers and drive stoppers when you get those little uh, illegal procedures and, and holding penalties along the way. It just kills scoring opportunities. Yeah, and then not, not only that, it's, you know, there's how many times you see a, a team is third and 15, third and 20, and there's a holding call on a DB, which is a, typically a five yard penalty, but it's an automatic first down. I mean, those are the kind of ones you can't give up. Um, you know, the ones that not only kill a drive on offense, but also extend or let a team keep going when you're on defense. So, um, you know, those kind of those kind of penalties, you got to eliminate those. You know, sometimes you have the ones where the guy's just, you know, he's playing hard and, and you know, he gets a penalty that way. I think you can kind of be an aggressive. I think you can kind of live with that. But it's the ones where you're just not mentally, you know, like Nick Westbrook jumping off sides at receiver. I mean, that's that, – you can't have that. that that's, a, that's just a mental – that's a mental mistake right there. Absolutely. Matt, are you got anything that people need to know about? Yeah, I will have. I went and saw Brady Allen play. He's a 2022 quarterback down in southern Indiana at Gibson Southern. Really good-looking prospects. Already got offers from IU, Purdue, I think Cincinnati and Virginia Tech. A lot of other schools are, are really getting in on him. He's even obviously young, only a sophomore. But I went and saw him play this past Friday and shot some highlights and did a video interview with him. And that will be up here in a couple hours um, on our site. So people can check that out. And then obviously we'll have some more, uh, obviously, uh, Nebraska pregame coverage. Absolutely. Matt Weaver from Peaks.com. That's where you can go check it out and find the information. Matthew, thank you so much, brother. Okay, take care. See ya. You, you bet. There's Matt Weaver joining us. Got a lot more coming up here on the program. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Speed Radio coming back with more from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is A.J. Moye. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington County. Counties for excellent service and peace of mind. Call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! 
Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Hey, this is Jordan Halls, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Wednesday, Hump Day, October 23rd. Thanks a lot for joining us. Mitchell Page, Matt Weaver, we've heard from him. Glad to have them on the program. Going to hear from uh, some IU football players next that we had the opportunity to talk to. Some we don't get the chance to talk to that often. Harry Kreider, one of those. He was forced into a position this past week uh, on this patchwork, patched up offensive line again with Hunter Littlejohn out at center. Not only do you have to move over from a different position, but into the center position where you're snapping the ball. That's not one that's just easily replaced, but he did a fine job. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Harry. Let's hear what uh, Mr. Crider had to say um, as we come out of that game and head into Nebraska uh, for, for this line that, that already lost Coy Cronk on top of that. But uh, let's hear what Harry had to say. more of a leader. I mean, you got to ID everything and uh, basically let everyone know what, what's going on. And so that's obviously a really important role. Uh, but I was comfortable in that and uh, we felt good about about it. Coach Hiller did a great job of preparing us for that. And do you do a, when you at guard? Do you pay attention? Obviously, you're paying attention to that stuff anyway, too. But does the, the center mentality and you kind of uh, keep track of all that stuff for everybody anyway? It does actually, yeah. Because uh, as an old lineman, I usually am a center. You know, all through high school, my first year here, I was center, so I was used to that. And as a guard, that does help. You know, you see the defense a lot better and helps your play a lot. Playing next to, I know you did obviously on Saturday. But been playing next to Matthew Bedford, who came in for Coy. What have you seen from him? I'm sure there's been some mistakes as a young guy, but it seems like overall he's played pretty good. What have you seen as a guy that's been right next to him? Uh, we've seen great improvement out of him every week. Um, with Coy still around, helping him out, that's been huge for him. Uh, just calming his nerves down, letting him know what, what to do on each play. And uh, we've seen that every week, and he's on the rise every week. When you look at the big side, but just making the, the move from guard to center, um, I know that you you came in, you were a very highly touted center, but to be able to go back there in the middle of the season, was that kind of, was it, did, it, did it feel good to be back there, or was it kind of different? Uh, it did end up feeling really good. I was happily surprised with that feeling, but uh, we practiced that situation a lot uh, throughout camp and uh, in the spring and such to be ready for that situation, and it was comfortable. I mean, having different guys... On each side, I mean, having Simon to your, to your left, and right. Ken to your right, I mean, is that a combination you've ever really had in camp? Or? Uh, no, not that exact combination, but um, we got versatile guys, and uh, they're happy wherever they go. And so how do you adjust to having different guys that you haven't had on either side of you during the game? Um, not a lot of huge adjustments. It's just a lot of trust, um, knowing that they're going to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, and then i got to do what I'm supposed to do, and just uh, trusting the guys next to you, whoever it is, and then uh, it helps the unit as a whole. How good does it feel for this running game to be as good as it's been the last few weeks? Uh, it's definitely a big confidence boost. Uh, we definitely are on the rise with that, and uh, Coach DeBoer has really instilled in us that if we keep doing what we're supposed to be doing, those plays are going to open up, and we've been seeing that lately, so we just got to keep moving forward with that. Sounded like that was Harry Kreider. Latest to step up and step in for the Indiana offensive line as they, uh, they've done a marvelous job. Uh, they've done an incredible job with, with, they don't have a lot of depth there. But folks, we're seven games into this season, almost eight now. And Indiana is, is standing on the doorstep of bowl eligibility in the eighth game. Nuts. Nothing we expected to talk about, especially with the troubles they've gone through, but, uh, it's worked out quite well. On the other side of the ball, defensively, Indiana still getting its feet, gaining traction each week. Um, made some great adjustments in the second half of that Maryland game. Um, I, I, I meant to ask Matt Weaver about the elevated play of Reese Taylor. Uh, he's one of the guys. Marcelino Ball also. We talked to Marcelino, and I talked to Marcelino about playing in these 
tough environments. You know, he's a veteran. He's been around for a while. This is not, he's not a, an underclassman. So he's been to a lot of these places, hasn't been to Nebraska, but it doesn't matter. He treats them all the same. We talked to Marcelino. Let's hear how that conversation went. Back from the Husky position, you and both you and Jamar, what, what made the blitzes uh, particularly effective? Shoot, that's just when we practice, man. Coach, Coach Jim Nelson, man. We, we, we work at it. And, uh, you know, me and Jamar, uh, great teammate, great player. That's my guy. So, you know, for, for me to get the sack, for him to get the sack against Ball State, and then for me to finally get a sack, you know, in, in competition and, and, and you know, wanna be one on one against him and then him to come back and get another sack. You know, I gotta I gotta pick my game up. <laughs> First, you guys are in a great position. You head out to Nebraska this week to get uh, become bowl eligible. Nebraska, one of the most iconic programs in college football history. Uh, it'd be pretty cool to get that done in such an iconic venue. Yeah. Talk about playing in a place like that, playing in those big games. I mean, oh. this is probably why you came to uh, a school in the Big Ten to play in Nebraska, in the Michigan State, and Ohio State. Yeah, um, yeah, right. Yeah, we uh, we excited to be there. We know there's gonna be sold out crowd. Um, we know they're gonna we gonna we gonna get that best shot, and uh, should be some great competition. You guys have done a great job of ignoring the, the uh, home crowds when you're on the road this year, Michigan State and Maryland. How, how have you guys? Where have you found that resolve to do that? Shoot, I embrace it. So um, I don't know. We just we, we like we like being the unwelcome guest. That's all I can say. Um, the crowd, you know, that's just the audience. We're not worried about that. We worry about the eleven players on the field, the opposing uh, opponents. So the crowd, that's just a variable. So, yeah. Thanks, all right. Thank That was uh, Marcelino Ball, a, a veteran defensive linebacker for the Hoosiers. The defense is growing. They're getting better. Th- this, this schedule has been set out so perfectly for Indiana. I mean, other than having to play Ohio State so early on, I don't think it would have mattered, to be honest with you, when they played Ohio State. Ohio State's a juggernaut. They're a thrashing machine. So it was probably good to get that game out of the way, to be honest with you. Focus on the bigger picture. But since then, the schedule has been set up pretty nicely. A winnable game, unexpectedly, for this Hoosier team on the road at, 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 in East Lansing. And then since then, you've had the bye week. you had Rutgers. You've had Maryland. Then now you've got a road game at Nebraska. All e- stepping up to me equally higher in level of difficulty. And then you come back home to wrap up a four-game stand, nah, a four-game set at home. But I, I think they have a bye after that. But it's perfect. Indiana can can win this game at Nebraska. And if they if they win their third straight Big Ten game, putting them at six and two, they come home to take on a one-win Northwestern team. For their eighth win of the season? Are you kidding me? With three games to play? That would be amazing. That would be utterly moving for this team. It would be motivation that I I, I can't imagine. To have eight wins in your pocket with three games to play? To me, that'll change. The mantra of going to Penn State. Tim texted earlier, does this having the buy help? Absolutely it helps for a, a number of reasons. You, you get healthy, first of all. You get more practice in. You can focus more on that game. Um, but if they have the confidence of having eight wins in their pocket, hey, man, I know Penn State's a great team, but I just watched Illinois beat a great team in Wisconsin. As a 30-point underdog, I promise you, Indiana will not be a 30-point underdog in Happy Valley. No way. Now, this is, we're getting way out in front of ourselves here. I'm getting out in front of myself. That's three games away, but I, that's but that's how things go. You get on a roll. You, you get on this wave. 
If you're playing well, you're on a wave of playing well and playing confident. And this team is playing confident. They're not playing perfect, but they're playing well enough. And as long as you can continue moving forward and continue playing better, I mean, I hate to use the cliche that has been the the cliche of the year, get 1% better. But it's true. If you're getting 1% better every day, you're improving. And if you're playing well and improving, well, hell, that's a great combination. And this team overall is playing well and improving. You have to continue doing both. You have to keep playing well and improving. And by playing well, that means executing. Not making stupid mistakes. Not getting 11 penalties in a game. That right there, that's the kind of stuff that is the difference between winning bigger games at Nebraska, at Penn State, at home against Michigan. You can't do those small things that hurt you because they add up. Hopefully they they, they continue to improve and get past those. There's a special season laying out potentially for this, for this football team. Hey, we also spoke with Nick Westbrook. I don't think we've heard from Nick yet. Nick had a great week last week. I don't have his stats up in front of me, but I um, I, I think he had five, six catches. Did score the touchdown at the end of the half. Had a much better day. He did have one. Man, he did that offsides penalty. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You can't have that. You can't have a wide receiver jumping offsides. Now, that's the kind of problems you'll have out of Nebraska, when you got 90,000 people, when you're at the end of the, of the horseshoe, I can't remember how their stadium is set up, but I, I, I'm sure with 70,000 people, there's at least one end that is just full of people. And usually it's students. And usually it's very, very loud. That's the kind of problems you'll have there. So you've got to be on point. You've got to be on focus. You, you've got to have your head screwed on straight and make not make these little mistakes. Those are that, that's the difference maker between winning and losing. You know they talk about football being a game of inches. It is moving an inch too soon, not getting it that extra inch. It's, it's just all it's it is a game that requires complete focus for sixty minutes. And if this team can do that, that nine win Indiana hashtag whatever that's more than a reality, or more than a possibility, but possibly a reality. And if they can do that, who knows? You get into a bowl game, what happens if you win 10 games? Now we're really talking crazy. We're going nuts in here. Who said 10 wins talking about Indiana football? Come on, man. What happens if Indiana is the biggest sports story uh, of the year for Indiana? Overshadowing basketball. What happens if Indiana football overshadows basketball this season? Has a better season. Has a better recruiting season. It's possible. I got news for you. If you think Indiana's recruited well the last two years, and they have, what the hell do you think is going to happen if they win eight, nine games? Something that they have rarely have ever done. If you think the recruiting has been well off of five and seven seasons, what do you think it's going to be off of a nine and three season? A January bowl in Florida. All that stuff is possible here. If you do the little things right, if you don't make the little mistakes, that's why it's very, very crucial. We got off on a tangent. I was talking about Nick Westbrook, and look what happened to me. Hey, (laughs) we had the chance to talk to Nick as well. Let's hear what uh, this fifth-year wide receiver had to say. How good of a catch was that for you at the end of the first half when you laid out and made it basically with your fingertips? Yeah, that was was a fun one. I'll definitely remember that one for a while. Did you realize when the ball was, I mean, like I guess kind of take you through, I mean, when you, when you kind of realize you have to lay out and, and you're, you're going to have to die for it to make the catch? Yeah, I mean, kind of how the game was going. I, and I remember in pregame, the ball was just, either would just drop really fast, so it was kind of just playing it by ear and then realized it was going a little bit farther than I thought it was um, and just, you know, just laid out because it was the end of the half, had to make a score, you know, get that momentum going into half and, you know, was able to pull it away. You know, Peyton's been through a lot kind of in this season in particular, losing his starting job. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that he's managed to kind of stay focused and come off the bench and lead you a few, what, what does that say about him as a player and as a person? Yeah, I mean, that's just him as a person. Uh, if you know Peyton, he's just 
Elio, he lives it out to the fullest, and he cares so much about this team and all the guys here. Uh, and, you know, he stepped up when his name got called, and that's just the type of guy he is. Was there anything said on the sideline from coaches or amongst offensive players when the QB change happened? Not really, just because we know we all have that next man up mentality. You know, it happens in O-line. It's happened, you know, with Coy and, you know, Matt Bedford stepping up. And, you know, when, when Hunter went down and, and Harry stepped up at center. Uh, so we, we just have that mentality throughout the whole offense and just trust that whoever's going to, you know, step up is going to be able to make the plays. Is there any adjustment at all that you as a receiver have to make, you know, going from a right-handed quarterback, left-handed quarterback, you know, that, that kind of stuff? No, not really. I mean, it's still the same offense. The ball's still going to the same reads. Um, I don't really notice the spin or anything different like that. Do you notice this? I'm sorry. Do you notice this WAP has emerged? Mm-hmm. You know, a little bit less coverage, or in terms of opening things up for you and Donovan now that he's become such a. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, there's just uh, you know they started doubling him up a little bit last game or this against Maryland just because he's had such you know good games, uh, and that's just how our our receiver corner offense needs to be just. Because we're so balanced, and anybody can make a play. Uh, they can't. Not many people have, you know, three cover corners that can can try to lock down three guys on the field. So there's going to be somebody open almost every play. There was our man Nick Westbrook, fifth year with wide receiver. Every Hoosier that's on this team has not been to Nebraska. None of them have been out there. Indiana hasn't been there since Nebraska rejoined joined the Big Ten Conference. The last time Indiana played at Lincoln was 1977. You can almost say even Don Fisher wasn't there, but that's not true, as Don told us on Monday. He got excited almost when I said, even you haven't called a game there probably. And he said, oh, yes, I have, 1977. (laughs) It was great. Uh, But, you man, it's an iconic venue, man. You know the name of their stadium is Memorial Stadium also. But uh, 90,000 people will be there. Some very, very large stadiums in the Big Ten. Indiana plays at all of them. This will be one they can add to that. You know, you've got the horseshoe with, well, they get 102,000, 110 up at uh, the Big House in Ann Arbor. And then, of course, out in Happy Valley, which Indiana will be there in a couple weeks. That's also a 100,000-seat stadium. Some great venues to play in, but uh, this is an opportunity for Indiana to get a win in one of these venues this week. Looking forward to it, man. Looking forward to the reporter segment tomorrow. Looking forward to get that put together, as we do each week. Dawson Garcia is visiting Indiana this weekend. Basketball, he is a uh, five-star recruit out of Minnesota that Indiana needs desperately, big 6'11 dude, that would make this class a very, very good class. It's the difference between this class being an okay class and a, a good class. Not only that, I've talked about this. Indiana is in a position of two years ago or two years from now, possibly being more than thin on that front line and looking at potentially having only freshmen if they don't land somebody here this weekend. Or not this weekend, but this season, commitment-wise. It's come down to, appears to be have come down between Marquette and Indiana. I don't know if Marquette has a slight advantage. They've been recruiting him a little longer, a little harder. But Indiana has been there for the most part. Tom Ostrom with those Minnesota connections making that happen as he'll be on campus this weekend. Not sure if he's going to squeeze in another vic, uh, visit to Marquette. There is that possibility. If that happens, I, I think Indiana's chances go down. If that does not happen and Indiana is his last visit, I think it's a, a, a 50-50, 51-49 kind of a proposition one way or the other. It's that close. It really is that close. I think Indiana is obviously, as far as a program, a better program, more, a much more historical program. The venue is much more historical. It's 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 a the basketball environment itself. They play in the Big Ten. They play on national TV all the time, virtually every game. There's just a lot going on there. Whether or not it's the choice of Dawson Garcia as the place where he wants to play college basketball, we'll find out soon. But Indiana, with that opportunity this weekend, the World Series got underway last night. The Nationals won 5-4 over Houston. Big win for them, man. Beat Houston's pitcher, hadn't beat 
been beaten since May. Cole, what was it? Cole Witt? IU men's soccer, 5-1 win over Evansville last night. Five different guys scoring in that match. we got a lot more to get to. Coming up next, we've got a reboot with Nick Baumgart talking some IU basketball. We've had a lot of football in the program today. A little bit of a baseball, World Series, some soccer. Michael Shipp, don't forget, joined the Indiana basketball team as a walk-on. I think that's the fifth walk-on Indiana has now, and they are pretty full on that. They've got some bodies to practice. A lot more to get to up next to reboot with Nick Baumgart. Stay tuned. Indiana Sports Speed Radio back with that right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is A.J. Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lord, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington County. For excellent service and peace of mind, call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier, number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. Today's guest is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville with hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer. Pizza, burgers, beer. Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. For a broken heart, let tear us apart. Let the love tear us apart. I found the cure for a broken heart. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Tuesday, October 22. Thanks a lot for joining us. Coming to you, of course, from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Joined now by our good friend Nick Baumgart from Indiana Rivals, thehoosier.com. Nicholas, how are you? Better than I deserve, Jimmy. What's going on? 
Not much, man. Not much. Uh, basketball's kind of sneaking into the lexicon. We had a secret, not a secret scrimmage. Uh, I'm not going to call it that anymore. A closed scrimmage uh, the other day what between happened? Indiana. What happened? I didn't I hear about it. it. Close... Yeah, exactly. It was, it, was a, it was a secret. It was a secret. Double secret probation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was so These secret not... that Marquette brought their uh, A-team uh, video production and uh... – Whipped out a little uh, highlight reel. Yeah, yeah, all the scrimmage. You think that well, had anything to well, do with their so recruit? You think that had anything to do with their recruitment of Dawson Garcia? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it did. That's why it's so petty. You know, I mean, it's like it's one thing if it was like, oh, you know, so petty. Yeah, <laughs> the seventy-two sixty-nine win. It was a scrimmage. I don't even know if you can win them. Anyway, yeah, it was pretty funny. But I don't think it's going to have any effect whatsoever. I mean, all you got to do is show them a tape from November 18th, um, November 14th, 2018, uh, and Indiana whooped them. So put it, put that reel together. Yeah, and, and I tell you, they had about the same effect on Marcus Howard in his scrimmage as they did that game last year. They kind of shut him down a little bit. Without, without the starting backcourt. You know, so um, yeah, a whole lot, a lot of, of, you know, obviously we didn't get to see the game, but you know, when you're looking through the box score, you can take you can take a lot from that, and uh, you know, the things I saw from that were great. Well, how about let's talk about let's start yeah, let's start with the free throw shooting. I, I think that is I that love is, that that is something that that people have got to be scared about because this is not an anomaly. This is not something that's come out of nowhere. This has been par for the case, par for the course uh, under Archie Muller for some reason. This team has had an inability to shoot free throws, and to me it's all mental. Uh, shooting free throws is all mental, man, at this level. You, 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 either, right, know, a- you either can do it or you can't under pressure. Talk to yeah. me. Um, so – if you're out there and you're worried about the free throws, like a lot of people, I mean, I read yesterday, I don't know how many people were, were concerned, and I mean, you know, I get it. If if you will read Basketball on Paper by Dean Oliver, who is uh, like a four, the foremost basketball statistician, like the, you know, the guy that kind of brought in advanced metrics and all that stuff. Anyway, he wrote a book called Basketball on Paper, and Dean Oliver is famous for introducing the four factors. And that's kind of what Ken Palm's whole website's built on is the four factors. And anyway, on the four factors, he he talks about free throw shooting. And his stance is that when you're talking about free throw shooting, what's important is our attempts. Not makes, just just getting to the line. That's that will win you more games. And sure there's going to be game by game exceptions. But on the whole, teams that shoot lots of free throws are successful. Well, so, I would disagree yeah, with that when you look at a 24 of 43 is not successful and you lose by three points. That's not, when point. you have 19 opportunities well, that you, you miss could, and you lose by three, that's not successful to me. You didn't have your, your best team in there. That was your, that best doesn't team matter. That's yeah. irrelevant to but me. You, that's irrelevant. If you have 19, why attempts, is it relevant? It's yeah, of course it's relevant. You, if you don't have your players, if you're playing with guys who, who aren't your best players? It's not going to re- your, your numbers aren't going to reflect. Nick is, is Trace Jackson. Nick is Trace Jackson Davis one of their best players? I don't know. I don't even know if he's starting right now. It's not. Um, he's still one of their better players. He went okay. like five for he nine. nine. He took nine free throws in sixteen minutes. Yes, that's, and he that's, missed that's, half that's, of them. Okay, well, he'll get better. I mean, it's, it's one scrimmage. We it's, weren't even supposed to know about it. Nick, it's not one um, scrimmage. This has been going on since okay. Archie came here. This team has had an inability to shoot free throws. This is not – that's what I'm saying. It's not like this is an anomaly. This is, this is par for the course. This is how it has been. This team has been horrific at the free throw line. And there's no getting this, around this, that, and there's no sugarcoating it. They have been poor free throw shooters, and there's no excuse for being poor free throw shooters, in my opinion, because free throw shooting is mental. Okay. Well, Do you disagree you know, with that? I, I did. Uh, you know, I think uh, this team's been together now for not very long. You know, they haven't even played a game. They played a scrimmage. Um, 
you know, let's 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 revisit this in six weeks, you know, and they come yeah, out and they shoot really bad in the first couple of games. I'll say, all right, sky's falling. Right now, at this point, I shooting forty three free throws is freaking impressive. Not and, when you miss half of them, it's not. Make them. No, okay. you, you keep saying that, but they haven't made them in two well, Are you years. not going to let me off the line until I say the sky is falling in Indiana? I don't, I, that's what, right. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. That's that's my stance. I know it's different. You, so you don't think would. a poor free throw shooting is, shoot team is a big deal? I'm not ready to write the indictment on this team yet. I mean, they, I'm not. They I, I'm just two- say, Nick, you cannot argue the fact this is how it has been for three years. This is not anomaly. This is how it has been. They have been a poor free throw shooting team over the last couple of years. It hasn't changed. That's well, why. Okay. That's I mean, why. That's why I think it's deserving of a conversation. When you miss, sir, when you shoot 50, 43 per free throws and you miss half of them, that is a problem. And especially it's a problem when you're on a team that has been historically a bad free throw shooting team just for the last couple of years. To me, that's a problem. It is a problem. Well, you know, a- but Joy, Joy Brunk wasn't even on the team. You know, Trace Jackson Davis wasn't even on the team. Last, you know, That's so my there's, point. There's they come here guys and become that, horrible free throw shooters. Why? That's the question. Shooting twice, they're shooting twice a day. I don't. I don't have an explanation for it. You know, I mean, um, Justin Smith hit, hit his three. So there, I was. You know, I. I don't know. They're 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 shooting twice a day supposedly. Um, it's not okay. I, you know better than this because you're you you know more about this sport than I do. But you know that this is not about mechanics. This is mental. This is all mental. You get to this stage of the no, game, you, you you can shoot a free throw. Hell, I can shoot free throws. It's not about the mechanics, so it doesn't matter if they shoot 10 times a day. It's the mental part of this, and for whatever reason, when they come to Indiana, they lose the mental ability to toughen up at the free throw line. I don't know why. I, I don't have the answer, but I can see that there is and has been a problem, and it continues today. No, I mean, I, 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 I see it. You know, I, I, I get it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just not ready to throw, you know, to write the book on it yet. I'm, you know, let's just see if once the game starts, and you know, what's hey, it I love it, you know, though. what if, what if Rob, the only guy Rob I can argue with had, here. had, what if Rob and Devonte had combined to hit like eleven of fourteen or eleven of thirteen? I mean, that number would look what? a lot better. <laughs> That's like saying, what if? Armand Franklin didn't miss every free throw he shot. What if Trace Jackson didn't miss half the free throws that he shot, which he did? Of course it makes it better. That's why we're talking about it, because they did miss half. They did miss all. They did not shoot the ball well. I think there's a human – okay. I think there's a human element to it, though, that we're missing. I really do. Okay? You're talking about – you're not talking about your uh, experienced guards missing – you know, for, I guess Al Al missed three, but you know it's the first your first action in a college. I don't want setting. to hear that crap. They're, they're, see, dude, these guys are three year, four year players. Man, come on, <laughs> come on, <laughs> let's get real, real baby. baby. We're I mean, real. You're, you're the only guy yeah, that I'm does being real with you. I am being real. There's a human side to it. I mean, it's it's, it's incredibly difficult. It's one thing to sit there and practice oh and make ninety out of a hundred free throws or whatever that. Ever that, that Al Durham does, and then it's different when you get into a game. And it must only be difficult a, for Indiana. Then why is it only difficult for Indiana? Why are these other teams having not having problems shooting free because throws? Because we we only scrutinize Indiana. We only we only break every single thing down about Indiana. I mean, there's plenty of teams out there that you know the sky was falling last year, right? Because they couldn't shoot three. You're right. We couldn't there's shoot. There's plenty we of other teams shoot. that aren't. You're, Duke, you're right. Duke shot worse but, than we did. Um, but they do I, other I'm things just, better. When you when you when you do are not elite, when you do not have elite areas of your game, you have to make up for it in other areas, i.e., being a really good free throw shooter, being really good at drawing fouls, be whatever the case. You can't be okay at something and then not really good at something else. You can't be a poor free throw shooting team and not be an unbelievable rebounding team. 
That's the difference between a Duke and Indiana. They can afford to be a poor free throw shooting team because they do other things so much better. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. Um, I do, but I'm just saying, like, you know, uh, I don't know. We're, we're hammering them, uh, you know, for the, for the, shoot, the free throw shooting. I just think it's a lead. I think sure. they deserve to be hammered easy. for it. It shows the season starting off like it left, like it left. That's just like it well, left. They, they, you have to see. That's the thing. Too many Indiana fans want to just ignore the realities of situations. They want to. They just want the the, the rainbows and unicorns, and that ain't my deal, man. I, I I'm I'm a realist. I want them to do well, but I'm also a realist. I acknowledge well, things. Me, this isn't me bad. sticking my head in the sand. This isn't me sticking my head in the sand by any means. You know, I'm I'm just telling I'm you. Not- I'm not talking about people you. that are, huh? You're my guy. You're my guy, man. I love, hey, you're my favorite. No, I know you, that, you but I'm just saying, I don't You'll come on and go back and like forth. I'm, I'm just out here um, grandstanding here for, for Archer Miller or for this team. or I, I'm not, I don't care less, but I'm, I'm legitimately not concerned at this point. Um, well, I, I, you know, I just, I want to see some. Okay. Let's, let's see where it goes. And, and if, if, if they're shooting, if they're shooting 70%, on December fifteenth, you know, you owe me breakfast. You got it, brother. Uh, now, other way around, on this, fine. You know, on December fifteenth. Okay, that gives us what a month. My When's birthday. The season? My birthday is the sixteenth. So. Oh, then we have to do it on your birthday. Then make it a special birthday. Something like that. Stick a candle you in the middle that. of an ashtray or something. Make it very special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. We might. We might do that over the phone. Or breakfast over the phone. Then, if you're gonna. <laughs> Breakfast over the phone. Hey, Nick's one of my fa- absolute favorite buddies in the world. We, I love him because we can do this. We can have this oh, kind yeah, of yeah. fun. We can have oh, yeah, fun we yell, doing this. Stuff. We yell at each other out. Uh, be, oh, it's, I, I wish we could do this every day. I, I love it. I mean, I love the back and forth. It's fun. It's fun. But. Yeah, well, you know, today I'm getting breaks, Jim. Um, so I'm yeah. actually in downtown, in, in beautiful downtown Evansville, coming from the corner of Southeast Martin Luther King Jr. in Walnut Street. Uh, I'm getting breaks in my car. I'm going to Sellersburg to see Trey Kaufman. Yeah, let's see. Uh, just doing a workout today? That's the plan. Yeah, you know, just trying to get out and see um, these IU targets, you know, so I have a better idea of, of exactly where they're at and stuff. I haven't seen him play since he was in the regional last year. And so, as I understand it, he's a lot different player. And, yeah, that's... Uh, so we're going to take a look at him. He's one that Indiana's interest sure seems to have ramped up. Of course, he's uh, an in-state player. Uh, I saw that uh, Dre Davis, he's going to Louisville, man. Yeah, that's not good for – well, it's not good if, if, you know, you're looking at Dante Davis in uh, 2022, his brother, 6'6 shooting guard. Uh, now his recruitment with Louisville was picked up too. So, you know, I, I don't know that he's somebody that, that Indiana would have wanted, but – you know, it certainly a, helps the Cardinals' chances. Yeah, here's the thing with me. It was like it was a weird situation. First of all, Indiana waited way too long to recruit this kid, just like they did with uh, uh, the kid that was the point guard that went to Kansas State, um, Pack, Nigel Pack. Nigel Pack. They waited way too long to recruit this kid. Now you got into a, a, a position where they don't really – I didn't think they really had room on the roster for him because of his position. Um, but at the yeah. same time, gosh, do you hate to – not only lose a player like that, but lose it to a border school like Louisville. Well, that's going to come back to haunt you. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, at this point, you know, it's pretty much 2020s kind of cooked for that, that shooting guard wing position, especially when you see how much depth they have already on the roster. And, you know, I saw him play twice last summer, once on a, on a feed of a tournament and then uh, junior all-stars of a Newcastle. He was really, really good there. But, you know, he was just kind of mediocre on the feed that I watched in that tournament. Um, yeah, he would have been a nice guy to have, you know, if the situation was right. But, you know, uh, you, you can only play so many six five, six six guys. So Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. It's it's a shame that. that they didn't have room for him because he's a hell of a player. I, I, I watched him play last year in the, in the, uh, on the AAU circuit. Great player. Yeah. You hate to see kids like that get away from the state, but it's a situation where, I mean, it's, it's like you can't blame Archie for that one, really. It's just – it's a situational kind of a thing. Well, I think Nebraska jumped in really, really early, too. 
you know, Michael Lewis was on that pretty early. Um, anyway, you know, that kind of sailed. Yeah, uh, unfortunately not. What do you think the chances are as we get later uh, that Christian Lander reclassifies? I, I'm thinking it might. Is it less repeat of that, a chance? To, repeat that question. What do you think the chances of Christian Lander reclassifying are now? Oh, very, very, probably pretty low. Um, you know, at this point, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, you know, he, he didn't, from, from reports on the ground out in Colorado Springs, he didn't have a great weekend. Um, you know, but if he, Indiana and Louisville both want him. So if he wants to go early, you know, he can, he certainly can. Uh, he's older, um, as I believe, I think he's, he's 17 already. So, um, you know, from a development standpoint, uh, you know, he'd probably be, probably be good to go. You know, there's just some concern whether he's a, a true point guard. Um, you know, I talked to some people this weekend, and they're kind of like, you know, he's a six-two point, he's a six-two combo guard. You know, he's a, he's a shooting guard who can handle the point some. Um, just talking about like a a Rob Finnessy or you know like a a table setter. Um, you know, he could pass. He's a great passer, but but he's he's more of a, a, a score score first. And that kind of that kind of matches Archie's preference for his point guard. He wants a scoring point guard, um, you know. So I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't think any. I don't think Duke's going to get involved. I'm, I'm pretty sold on that. They haven't gotten involved seriously at this point. They're they're probably not going to. Um, so, you know, we're just going to have to kind of kind of wait and, and see how the start of the school year goes. Um, if I had to put a percentage on it right now, I'd say probably 35 or 30 percent, 35, 40 percent, maybe. That could did, you see, did you see that uh, Culver Academies and the head coach was it Mark? Is his first name Mark Galloway? Yeah, Mark, Mark Galloway, Galloway has been suspended by the IHSA and the uh, and. and Culver Academy has been put on probation for the for the re- remaining regular season. Yes, I mean they can't you can't play in the state championship. I I don't know what they. Uh, yeah, uh, that's stupid. not a ban. I'm not sure that they've been banned from postseason. They're just on probation. It's really really stupid. Uh, it was you like an alumni, about? former players played the current team like in a. I don't know, something, some kind of scrimmage thing. And I think they took money for a charity or something like that. I'm not really sure exactly the, I got to get into it a little more, but it, but it's something to do with a, a rules violation like that. Um, you know, which is just kind of stupid, but you know, I get it. Rules are rules. I don't think it's anything like, you know, he, he was the nothing head coach severe. Carmel. Um, I, I don't think that they're like on that. any kind of uh, ban or anything. It's just probation is a warning that an illegal act has occurred. It's a matter of record and shall not be repeated. Similar in further acts which violate IHSA bylaws or policies of the association by the Bulls bas- by the boys basketball program shall be dealt with in a more severe manner. Meaning they're on probation. They, so as long as they don't uh, do anything <laughs> else, they'll uh, they'll be fine. Hey, we got to get out of here real quick. But if you can hang out, we'll do another segment, Nick. Yeah. All right, we've got to uh, take a quick break here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. We've got Nick Baumgart from Indiana Rivals with us. We'll be back with more from the Golf Club at Eagle. I can't help a baby if I'm acting strange. I'm just hoping, baby, I'm not going to say well. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. 
pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lord, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. It's Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. For the best recycling and waste removal service, turn to the area's leader, Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling, a homegrown company serving southern Indiana since 1995. Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling serves Floyd, Clark, Harrison, and Washington County. For excellent service and peace of mind, call Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling today at 812-944-5642. That's 812-944-5642. Keep life sweet with Sweetland Waste Removal and Recycling. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. This is James Blackman Jr., former Indiana Hoosier. Make sure you're keeping up with the Hoosiers on Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this hot day, October 23rd. Thanks a lot for joining us. Middle of the week, man. We're halfway there. It means it's all downhill from now. It's all downhill from here. Of course, you knew that a long time ago, right? Coming up tomorrow is the uh, reporter segment. Get that put together. Dustin Schutte from the Saturday Tradition, always on. We'll uh, grab an IU reporter and one from Nebraska. And have a nice little roundtable session chat about this weekend's contest in Lincoln as the Hoosiers stand at 5-2 and two on the gridiron looking for bowl eligibility. In one of the most unlikeliest of places one would have thought in Lincoln, Nebraska, I don't think a lot of people, although I'm not bragging, but I'm not one of them. I, I firmly believe this team is going to win seven, eight games. I said that from the start on record with that. Um, and this Nebraska game is one that I pointed to a long time ago, not knowing where they would be, of course, when they got here, but thinking that this was possibly a, a game Indiana could steal. And that's more than a reality now. And Indiana currently stands as a a one-and-a-half-point favorite in a line. And not that the betting line always matters, but they're they're pretty good at what they do. You see that spread last week? Indiana was a a six-and-a-half-point favorite. They won by six. Yeah. They can. They're good. they're, They're pretty good at what they do. All those big, shiny buildings out there in Vegas, don't build them on winners. But this spread has jumped around 
It, it opened as Indiana two and a half point favorite. It moved up to three point favorite, which was astounding, to be honest with you. But it also shows the faith that the bookmakers are having in Indiana after that win at Maryland, a win that on paper doesn't look as pretty because it's Maryland, but that team played a lot better than they had the previous week. It's a road win, and it's exactly what the bookmakers thought, and they did it. Indiana, now this spread has jumped back and forth, and I, I and again, I'm just using it as a talking point because it's weird. That you, don't, you usually don't see a ton of movement in betting lines because it's kind of things are kind of what they are. They're set. They, you know, this is this team's playing this team. Well, then you got some variables this week. You got Indiana likely without their starting quarterback, but as is Nebraska. Indiana has a better backup apparently. A former starter. But they originated a two and a half point favorite, moved to three. Then it swapped the other way. Nebraska was a one point favorite. And now Indiana's back to being a point and a half favorite. I guess that's changes because of what's being bet on the game. But there's also variables like the starting quarterback for Indiana. If Michael Penix is the starting quarterback for certain, I, I, at this stage, I think Indiana would be a five-point favorite or, or minimum a, a field goal favorite. And that's saying something because Nebraska only won their game by a field goal last at home against Northwestern in the waning seconds of the game. It's going to be interesting, man. I'm looking forward to it. We had out on Friday to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. World Series underway. The Nationals got game one in Houston last night, 5-4. to four. Kind of a surprise. Men's soccer team, Indiana, a 5-4 winner over Evansville last night. We'll have to play that sound tomorrow. We did not get to that. Unless you want to play something quickly from him, but if not. Yeah, let's uh, throw Coach Yeagley up there on their big win last night over Evansville. Enjoyed that. I told the guys at halftime that was that was a really fun half to just kind of sit back and didn't have to say much. Really good focus, energy, and execution. Um, really, really complete 45 second half. Um, you know, we in credit Evansville they got a little bit of rhythm and, and, and got the goal at that kind of the key time. And I thought it well, we always felt in control, but thought we uh, we could have just kind of put the could have put it a fully away. We, we let him kind of linger a little bit, and that would be the only disappointment. But it, it wasn't it wasn't poor in that segment. Just we needed to be a little sharper, and it was comparison to the first half. Um, some really good individual performance collectively. Obviously, we're very pleased. Um, fantastic goals, really good goals, good sequences, good lead ups. We had some other really good chances that didn't lead to goals or didn't finish with goals. Um, got some guys in that do a lot for our program, and I think that's another important um, opportunity that we were able to do tonight. And then uh, to cap it off with Trey getting the goal was was kind of a special. You can see how much the team cares for for Trey in particular, but also the guys that you know don't don't uh, get to suit up and play, and some don't even travel. And for them to get into a game um, under the lights at home is is a memory that they'll always have moving forward. And I was just happy that we were able to kind of share that together. So that was a great great moment tonight. That was Coach Todd Yeagley, Indiana men's soccer team. 5-1 winners last night over Evansville. Indiana currently ranked 10th. They're coming. They just came off of a uh, 3-0 loss to Maryland. First loss in Big Ten play in quite some time. Into the streak. But uh, they still have the home winning streak going, which uh, goes back to 2013, I believe. <laughs> That's a long time. It's just ridiculously stupid to think about that crazy i think they're back in action on friday dawson garcia visiting this weekend uh archie miller's last chance to sway the big man for his services word is it's uh, down between indiana and marquette from everything i've seen heard read talked to heard all that good stuff 
I, I, I'm still thinking Marquette has got a sliver of a lead, but I think it's it matters whether or not he gets a, another visit with Marquette afterwards. I know Marquette would probably be pushing for that because that last visit is is big a lot of times, getting that last word in. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, it is what it is. But it's something Indiana desperately needs. They, they needed to land a big man in this class very badly because if not, everybody they sign next year for the, pre, for the season after that, they're going to be freshmen and this front court is going to be gone with the exception of Race Thompson. Possibly Trace Jackson Davis if he stays for a third season. We'll find out. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for us today, man. Another great show. Mitchell Page. It was a Mitchell Palooza. Mitchell Palooza. It's our good friend Mitchell Page joined us early on. Former Hoosier football player. We're glad to always have him on and talk to him. Look forward to doing that. More as the season progresses now and getting down to the nitty-gritty. Indiana heads out to Nebraska this Saturday for a 3-30 contest with the Cornhuskers in an attempt to become bowl eligible for the earliest since, uh, what, 2007? Matt Weaver from Peaks.com on with us as well. We had a great chat with Matt, as we always do each and every Wednesday. We got to hear from Harry Kreider, Marcelino Ball, Nick Westbrook, and Coach Todd Yagley from the Indiana Men's Soccer Program. So another good show, and uh, we appreciate everybody. That's going to wrap up tomorrow. We're back with the reporter segment, of course, on Friday. is uh, Todd Father Friday. Todd Yagley will be with us. Tom Brew as well. And we'll see what else we can scare up. But uh, until then, for Jake, I'm Jim Coyle, and I will see you on the radio.